There we go. Okay, I think we have. Trisha, you might want to go on. Um, you might want to go turn off your camera because you're on the same link. Maybe. I see that. I'll maybe just, because you, you go on. Yeah. Right, yeah, I've done good. it there. Perfect. That was just my, is, well, welcome, everyone. This is the art of collaboration. This is how things all go in, in the world of in person and uh, on virtual events. So basically, as always, if you're if you're new to this series and um, what I love to do and something I feel that is very important before anything important is to bring some presence, some mindfulness to the event. So you may have had a busy day. You may have been running from A to B. And this is time that is really dedicated just for you. So for the next 60 minutes, I want you to give yourself full permission to bring your self into this moment to ground yourself in presence to really be open to learning to laughing to collaborating and so with that in mind we will take three deep breaths together and even though we're in virtual spaces and we're not together in person i want you to imagine that you are so we're going to close that we are that we're going to close down our eyes and we're going to direct our breath towards our belly so we make it really really deep so when you're ready let's inhale as deep as we can for one a slow long exhale through the mouth breathing in for two exhale through the mouth Breathing in for three. Exhale through the mouth. Lovely. Keep your eyes closed just for a moment. And I would like you to reflect on what it is that you value in a meaningful friendship. So just take a moment to reflect on what are the strengths the traits, the values that you have in a friendship. And just allow some images, words to come to mind. And when you're ready, we'll take a final breath together. We'll open up our eyes and we will smile brightly. So thanks for doing that, everyone. It always really helps. It helps me. <laughs> it helps me to focus and it helps you to, to all come together. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of background about how this came together. So in October um, at the Red Line Book Festival, myself and Kieran went along to an event and it was called The Art of Collaboration Pre Presents Music, Movement and Words to Inspire Wellbeing. Well, I can tell you that we were both intrigued. We were like, this sounds amazing. We have to go to this. And I can tell you that we were not disappointed. It was one of those very, very memorable evenings where both Paul, Jim and their team, if you like, of um, collaborators did something quite unique. They were able to not just collaborate with one another on stage, but actually the audience, we became another member, if you like, of the performance. And they brought us together in a way that really I still get kind of goosebumps thinking about it is that it was like the audience were friends by the end of it. We weren't just people, strangers sitting beside one another. We became this unified um, group, if you like, for that evening. We had fun. We laughed. We, we really, really connected. And it's just something that I think is so, so valuable. So without further ado, I want to just tell you a little bit about um, both Paul, Dr. Paul Rowe and Professor Jim Lucy. Before I do, the housekeeping is the polls are there for you to answer. Please do um, answer them because I'll be going through them. And it's just so interesting to get your uh, interactivity. This is the way we can collaborate uh, on screen. Uh, use the chat function. I can't promise I'll read everything, but if there are any questions um, and we have time, please put them into the uh, the question and answer box rather than the chat because they could get lost. So basically, um, Dr. Paul Rowe, as you can see here with the lovely red scarf, very dapper, lovely man here, is a professor of clarinet at the Royal Irish Academy of Music and a lecturer at the Technical University of Dublin. He is also a professionally accredited coach and mentor. 
His passion in life is collaboration as a truly transformative way of living a more integrated life. Paul enjoys the rich dialogue of performing, teaching, mentoring, and co-creating powerful learning spaces with students and artists alike. Then we have on the top hand corner, uh, Professor Jim Lucy. He is a psychiatrist currently holding the position of inspector of the Mental Health Commission. And my son said to me today, is he going to inspect you? Is that why he's coming off the call? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, God, I, I don't think so, Luca. Um, I hope not. Um, he is a regular contributor to the media. Some of you will definitely know his work um, from the media. He is a keynote speaker and he is an author of three best-selling books. Well done, an amazing feat. And his most recent book, which I absolutely loved back in 2021, is called A Whole New Plan for Living, Achieving Balance in a Changing World. So what a, an amazing title. And that was written during uh, the 2020 lockdown. So if you are fortunate enough to have heard Jim speak before, you will know that he is both witty and wise, full of humor and wisdom. And he manages to help us question our limiting beliefs and forge a pathway to positive mental well-being. So you're both so, so welcome. And I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to put my first question to you, Paul. I would love to know because you actually founded the art of collaboration. So for people here, like what is it? Yeah, the art of, well, I mean, there's two answers to it, really, at least two answers. But if I talk a little bit about the art of collaboration, it's a company that I founded. In fact, it's now um, a properly incorporated company that just recently, but uh, it was a company I founded back in 2018. And uh, I suppose you'd call it a collective of practice in which professions from different backgrounds as diverse as musical performance, psychiatry, leadership development, design and education. We share experiences, insight and knowledge, and we, we collaborate on creative projects. Uh, my motivation for it was really, was the understanding that we always, uh, when we're working together with other people, especially people who have different life experiences, we learn such a lot from, from these interactions. And also the reality is that Collaboration itself is a practice and without actually meeting people who are a little bit different to yourself, a little bit different experiences uh, from different disciplines, different working lives, uh, we can very easily get caught up in our own silo thinking. So my motivation really was about, well, it was about fun, it was about laughter and it was about learning uh, more than anything else. Our most recent project involved uh working with a dancer who lives here in Dublin, a wonderful dancer, Ruth Prithika. And we base it on the idea of nine emotions, Nava Rasa. So we kind of combine Indian dance with Irish music, with words. And as you said earlier, Fiona, we involved the audience in our in our performance that, that evening. What we're really trying to do is um, to perform to be with people rather than perform for people and uh on the understanding that actually when we're together we're stronger we're better i really came across paul i have to say it really did um so jim how did you get dragged into all of this then how did that come about your your friendship i'm really interested in to be honest how how you are such good friends and, and what is the the traits behind that if you like well, it, it, it's it's something that I value enormously. My friendship with Paul it began in a way before I met him, because Paul, of course, is a teacher and he was teaching one of my daughters. So I had been hearing for years uh, of her uh, delight, really, at these. Um, they were musical collaborations. I don't know that she was the most diligent or talented clarinet stu student. Uh, so he was very, I think, persevering and teaching her, but they clearly enjoyed enjoyed their, their, their these meetings. And so I knew of him very, you know, very much from that. And then one day, it must be, one well, gosh, it's more, time flies, but it's years ago now, I got a text message. I don't tell you how old it was. Uh, why didn't you come and have lunch with me? Signed, Paul. So, I mean, I thought about all the Pauls I might know. I mean, there are a lot of Pauls in the world. You know what I mean? It's it's not, it's not, it wasn't a great hint. 
And I thought lunch sounded nice. I thought it could be, you know, my former boss. Um, it could have been my sister's former husband. That wouldn't necessarily have been good. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, um, or who knows? It could be a poll I might enjoy a meeting and and so on. So I I, I did I did my homework. I did I put it to my wife. What do you think? And she said, sure, go anyway. What harm? And I'm uh, so glad I did. We met uh, in a, for lunch at a restaurant in Dublin, and he in, invited me to this idea about collaboration. We both knew of each other's work, both instantly, you know, respected each other and enjoyed each other. But we were both captivated by this idea that he had, which was this idea that our connectedness with people who are really kind of a, a mirror image of ourselves is in some way, you know, it's an ersatz or certainly a derivative connection compared to connections with people who are not like ourselves or who in their in their likeness to us have lots of difference. And so here was somebody who isn't a musician uh, with somebody who uh, is, is, is psychologically minded. We're both psychologically minded, interested in the mind and interested in so much about human beings. And then the wider idea then, and it's Paul's concept, that actually the building of this connection, I suppose it's down to things like trust. Um, uh, it's kind of a revolutionary, almost, but certainly political with a small p, uh, concept that at some level we have to get out of our boxes and maybe, maybe even tear the boxes down, but certainly approximate each other in some way so that we connect we collaborate and uh, and then we build that skill of being able to be collaborative because it's actually people say well no i want to be with people like myself yeah um, and that and that 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 de-skills us and that happened during covid i think mm. a lot of the suffering i saw as a therapist as a counselor mm. what was born out of the isolation and so i was blessed that this had been long established and so even through covid we had ways around it and then plans for developing it in many different media. And so whether it's uh, music or poetry or dance or painting or um, uh, simply talking nonsense, we do that with it. With, nonsense with, is always with, welcome. Yeah, yeah, we figure. Uh, we've been doing that behind the scenes here quite a bit. Um, so what I'm interested in, why do you think people are resistant to um, collaborating with people who are not like them? Why do we seek out the familiar, if you like? I mean, I suppose part of the challenge, Fiona, is that we're in increasingly living in a world that's somewhat fragmented, where we're, we're separated from each other and we're encouraged to be separated. And in fact, there's quite an, an onus of responsibility put on us to manage all the challenges we, we have in our lives, even the kind of, you might say, the commercialization of mindfulness itself, the idea of that we can become so, we can manage everything independently. Um, as to why there might be a resistance, I suppose to have really powerful collaborations involves vulnerability, actually. More than anything else, if you want to uh, have a deep and meaningful collaboration and to create something new, you have to be willing to lean into uncertainty. You have to be willing to acknowledge you don't have the answer. You don't know. As an individual, you don't have the answer. So it is a vulnerable space. So many of us are validated by our own uh, skills and expertise by society. But almost when you enter into a collaboration with people who are who have different skills, you have to own up to one's own vulnerability. Where do I fit in in this space? Yeah. You know, I think it's a lot or around, lack of around vulnerability. Or... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So just in the chat function there, if you want to put down some of the, the thoughts that came to you when I did that little meditation at the start in terms of what you value in a friendship, what it, do you know what that is? Because I think it's helpful to know what it is that you actually value rather than kind of finding and I've actually had this experience myself with friendships where they've kind of gone north quite quickly because I didn't take time maybe to step back a little bit and see was this actually a positive or negative because I'm a very friendly person and therefore I'm quite open to uh, being friendly to everyone and so that's something I've learned along the way that I need to be a little bit more um, 
protective. I'm I'm almost the opposite there, if you like, Paul. I'm so open. Oh, that's yeah. Mm. Yes, I know, yeah. I know. And that's only come with uh, maturity, I think. Um, but I'm going to put you both on the spot, just as people are are, are um, uh, responding here in the chat. I'm going to ask you both, right? Paul, to start with you, what is the one thing you value most in Jim? You know, I really love his, his sense of humor, his laugh, his easy spontaneity and laughter. And you'll hear that. There's no doubt you'll hear this in the talk. And I did actually, if you, if you don't mind me sharing this, Jim, last week I happened to meet um, Jim's son, Michael. Michael. Well, whom I hadn't met since he was about seven or eight, and now he's in Trinity writing plays and so forth. And during the during it was a poetry afternoon with Paul Muldoon, and Paul was was uh, very very witty, and of course Jim was uh, his his laugh is symphonic, shall we say? <laughs> and I think so. I could, I could see I could see Michael looking over at the dad and going, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> so so uh so i think um the laughter <laughs> is very important and in fact if you want to create if you want to if you want to do uh be creative laughter is a great is a great lubricant for creativity shall we say so i really appreciate jim's of course his, of course his, wis his wisdom but his laughter and his spontaneity i think in particular okay no jim no pressure what about no you no pressure i got you to just well, I mean, very, very, uh, uh, leaves me speechless for a moment. But let me gather myself before I, I laugh. I mean, I, I, I think that he's, uh, Paul's absolutely right. He, he, George Valiant is one of my heroes in mental health, you know, talks about the factors that make us resilient and the factors that make us have the ability to bounce back. And and, and humour is one of the hugely um, valuable ones. In fact, life without humour would be very difficult. But look, Paul is an amazing man. This is a really, I mean, it's a, it's an, it's extraordinary generosity. Um, welcoming me into his home, you know, welcoming into his, his, his mindset, uh, introducing me to all kinds of things, whether it's, you know, um, music I've never heard before, or ideas I, I really want to lean into. But I think they're just sort of like, they're the part of the menu. What you get with Paul, with a friendship, is a sense of being connected to a person who is really remarkable. And, you know, at times, you know, you hear his vision of saying, wouldn't it be great to do something remarkable, to achieve something remarkable, to, um, to aim high? You know, how many times in a, you know, in our life, in each decade of our lives, so many of us, you know, make our friends say in one decade and expect them to somehow survive, you know, and we've, we, bereavement and grief happens and other kinds of losses and they don't expect necessarily they to be, to revive or new ones to come and here's a man that i met in my middle ages turns out to be somebody i feel i've known all my life but also inviting me into this whole i well uh, well multiplicity of ideas i love the idea this is an idea that i mean without being too wild it's an idea that could save the world you know what i mean that's it's 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 not a small thing. We're talking about an existential time, a crisis. Mm -hmm. What? Who has ideas about it? You have people answering war with more war, answering more conflict with more denial. And here's an idea. Actually, no, we 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 could we could make music together. You know, yeah. I mean, I tell you what. One one um, what, we had a wonderful time one day. I didn't realize we were doing this, but we were recording. We were recording what the the art of collaboration was doing, and he said, "Will you come along and sit in the recording?" And uh, at a cue, he said, "Now you do something." And I, I don't play an instrument or anything. And I said, "What do you want me to do?" And he said, "I want you to talk as we're playing. Talk along with the movement, with the rhythm." And I said, "Well, what, what will I talk about?" He said, "Just talk the usual shite you always talk." <laughs> and and You're so talented. Absolutely. It was one of my. Well, it, I think it's 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 you know my that my Michael thinks it's really cool. I mean, it was it was a lovely piece of music. We called it you know the um, uh, mountains of the mind. I think or something. But I just don't think you can count the number of times you have an opportunity to, you know, to leave your own world and enter into a sound world, an ideas world, an imaginative world, and in a personal world. Yes. 
Yeah. It, it's it's so valuable. I, I I do take your point as well. We wonder whether we should lean into friendships or whether or why they end sometimes. You know, I have an idea that people come into our lives a bit like angels. You know, I'm, I'm not talking about any particular religion or anything. I'm, I'm saying, but I think that people can, and sometimes they can make a huge difference in your lives for the better, maybe for the worse, but mostly for the better. And sometimes they leave. And and I, I, I've, over time, I've made it my view that I should guard against that. Like not the coming in, but the leaving. You know, mm, and yes. see what I can do to invest in the in the reciprocity of it, in the in the in the engagement with it. We can all be kind of busy yes. and same. And uh, so I I try and teach my students, you know, um, and certainly help my try to give it to my family. Somebody says to you, Fiona, you know, uh, are you interested in that uh, that gig in Tala? Or it could be you're interested in that that thing you might do down in in Clonmel, and mm -hmm. um, you don't know anything about it. You don't know what it is, but your answer is always going to be yes. I'm interested. I mean, I'm interested. Aren't you? Yes, I'm curious. Exactly. I'm interested. Yes. Now that's that's one of the things that Paul has given me. I can always say, hmm, I'm interested. You know, how can I end up doing it? <laughs> well, that sounds wonderful, guy. You, you know, to be honest, you can really feel it. That friendship is very, very. Um, it, it, you inspire one another is what comes across and that there's a genuine sort of mutual um, uh, benefit from, from you being together. And it's just, it's lovely. And I think that that energy then is something that we all, you know, uh, benefit from because that's how mm. energy is, isn't it? That, that mm. when you could create it, it has that wonderful um, domino effect, if you like. Um, so I'm just going to read some of these. We've got lots and lots of comments of coming in of what people like. So Bernie is saying loyalty and empathy. Another Bernie is saying being able, not an, another equally important, beautiful Bernie is saying being able to be true, uh, your true honest self, not having to present a persona. I would really agree with that. I think that when you're able to just be completely at ease within mm. yourself mm. that mm. there is this acceptance and i've seen that word coming through that there's not mm. a sense of judgment or comparison that's mm. very um reassuring and loving and enjoyable really and um, respect loyalty and humor definitely yes hello fidelma you're so welcome and um, loyalty and kindness an open smile absolutely and again, do you think it's quite subjective, like how you feel? You know, they say like, you know, sort of almost check in with how you feel before you meet a person and then how you feel afterwards. You know, so if you feel lighter in a sense of having spent time with someone, you know that this is, is someone, a friend that you really want to value and need to, to take care of, I think. I, um, I think there's something about that uh, personal um, restoration that you come to a, a friendship with. You know, if somebody says, let's go for a walk. You could easily say, well, look, I, I don't bother. And, 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 and in fact, there is a kind of an inertia that you have to overcome. Most people aren't, and I'm certainly not, uh, I might appear differently. They aren't, you know, dying to go for a walk all the time with everybody. You know, they're, they're shy or they're reserved or they're tired or whatever else. But there's a personal piece that you do. You say, well, I'm going to open myself to this. And yeah. that's, a, that's a, you know, I, mean, I was talking to Paul actually at that meeting at the poetry group with my, my son and, and himself. And I was saying that I had this new concept that I was going to, you know, uh, manifest my anxiety in a different way. You know, so I, 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 you know, anxiety would be a big feature for me. And so I, I would I think I'm going to have a threat level put on my signature. on my. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Jim Lucy, you know, um, him brackets. Um, orange level of anxiety, close brackets. You know what I mean? And and, and, you, you, and, and and you know, I mean, sometimes it might be yellow, and it might you know, sometimes it might be green, sometimes it can be red. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when you go into a connection, you know, you would be in any of those. It's not when you're opening yourself to yourself, joking apart. You could be in any of those. If you're a volatile person, which most of us are to some degree, many of us are. Mm -hmm. You could be meeting your friend when you're at orange threat level, or even red. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what, what do you do with that? Do you say, do you, do you say, well, I won't go out? Or do you feel that you can go out and not be judged mm -hmm. and actually be the real key? And I think a lot of people mm -hmm. want to hide. That's the, the instinct. Hide, yeah. when you feel 
orange or red it's like you want to close the door and not go yes, and ultimately right. you you generally feel worse when you do that it's like you, that. you, you, you do you do yes you do. yeah you were it's about show, that... it's about showing up isn't it really mm. i mean it's about showing up as you are mm. Mm. and the important the importance of showing up uh mm. in in with friends and friendship and that fiona you had another question and um, well, I was just reading some comments here, I think. So um, compassion says Trina has my back fun and tells the truth. Well, I've been doing a lot of self-compassion training here with people. And I think compassion is definitely something that encompasses so much of this. It's almost like mm -hmm. a blanket term for a lot of this acceptance, non-judgment and um, being able to feel trusted, that you can trust the person, mm -hmm. loyalty and honesty, investment is key. So kindness, all of these things really do come under that umbrella term, I think, in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everyone, for sharing. That's that's brilliant. And I'm going to read the polls in a moment. But before I do, um, I'd love to sort of talk a little bit. Um, I might put this to you, Jim, in terms of the mental health impacts of loneliness because we've mm. we've spoken a lot about um the importance of of friendships and how that really is uplifting etc but not etc but how uplifting it is and how mm. important it is but what are what happens to us when when we go through periods of loneliness not just mm. a day or a week but when we go into a, a phase of loneliness mm. what what mm. impact does that have well it's very toxic for us it's very I mean, even at a practical level, even, you know, some people find the language of the mind quite alienating. But just just imagine being alone or someone who is alone, you know, and uh, they're retreating into that aloneness to the extent that they, you know, don't put don't 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 don't, don't bring in any uh, any milk from the fr to the fridge. They don't go to the shop. They they post comes in the in the letterbox and they don't open it. You know, it um the isolation comes in the door and they would retreat within it and they're in the back room. You might say that's extreme, but degrees of it are actually very, very common. And certainly for times, particularly when we're overwhelmed, either we're struggling with illness or tiredness or exhaustion or trying to get past intoxication or even addiction. Um, you know, that period of retreat can become itself a problem of, of of isolation and then it can become a way of life and there are certain certainly lots of people uh, whether it's economically or socially or because they haven't had the opportunity to fulfill their real talents because we all have talents um they their health is really impaired by that isolation mm -hmm. and uh, that's it's great when you come across that because actually from a little distance of the therapist you can recognize that and see that if you can get somebody to take steps towards re-engaging with the things they like to do and love you know it doesn't all we don't all have, to, all have to go to the gym but we don't all have to you know take up golf you know or, or be able to catch a ball you know um you know i like to tell uh, paul and others, i i see out of one eye I, i'm not going to connect with the ball at all i love I've, all sport but there's no i i have to find another game mm -hmm. otherwise i'll be back in 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 the back room yeah and 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 that's not only but practically speaking who answers the post who collects the milk bottle who 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 makes the you know that appointment for the dentist if you're all on your own to be honest life is very hard to do on your own when i remember being in london many years ago and realizing that i was seeing people who may not have spoken to anybody at all mm. since the last consultation the supermarket a good analogy but we now i love the old idea of going to the shop counter and saying you know i'll have you know two four candles and a bag of chips you know what i mean but there's nobody at that counter now and now you can go up to your goods and you barcode it and the thing pings at you and that's your connect your social connection so yeah it's yeah, heartbreaking so yeah it, it is heartbreaking if you think about it. the atomization the fractured nature the isolation of our lives it's not an illusion. It's not an extreme thing. It's actually yes. a commonplace, almost normative thing. And if we're talking about, Jim, also, you know, in an era of AI, you know, and in an era of the fascination with robotics and so on and so forth, and yet we'll never, no computer will ever replicate the human experience. Mm -hmm. And 
the importance of uh, the connections between humans and the remarkable uh, qualities humans bring to each other. I mean, as you said earlier, Fiona, we all impact others all the time. And a lot of the time we're, we're completely unaware of how we are impacting the people we're meeting. And yet we ourselves can be acutely aware of how this person who's in front of us or in the space with us is impacting us. Are we feeling edgy? Are we feeling at ease? Are we feeling a sense of judge or whatever? And yet we often haven't got much of a clue how we are impacting the people we're with. And so we actually completely need need people just to even just regulate our nervous systems. And Jim can probably talk a little bit more about the nervous system end of things, but we really need healthy nervous systems to be with so that we can be at our most effective. And one of the important things about having good collaborations is actually having a trust in a space that people can feel they can make mistakes, they can completely be authentically themselves, that they can say things that they're not going to be judged by. In fact, so much of our lives uh, are, are impa impacted by our own internal saboteurs, our own judges that are going on in our heads all the time. And one thing you find in collaborative spaces is that these saboteurs actually take a backseat and our sages come come to the front, if I can use that expression. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But to, what would you say to somebody like, for example, because what we're talking about is, is almost like they've they've come through that period. But when mm. you're in the thick of it, right, when you are at that point where you are in the back room, that you don't have the like, I, I would say that loneliness and depression are just like, you know, one and the same in many ways, because mm. you're so um, debilitated. You, you don't have the um, I, 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 I think motivation. I think I think, Fiona, that one of the difficulties is, is, and there may be people listening to this who are in that space now. Exactly, yeah. And one of the things is, you know, uh, you know, um, two Muppets like ourselves coming on and say, hey, we go for walks, you know what I mean? And and it can seem a little simple, you know, we're, you know, and we don't mean that. Neither of us mean that at all. I think that, you know, the ideas about trust, about acknowledging your own vulnerabilities. I talked about anxiety or even the ability to catch a ball or um not that we all have these these sort of central ideas of you know what we can't bring to, to to life and we then see sadness and isolation and loneliness in very emotional terms and we can't practically undo what is a gulf between the physical experience of this and the emotional underpinnings of it because um it seems like there's years of therapy to connect those two things so but, yeah. over, the, over the years, I learned a, a simple idea about that, about connecting ourselves. And it's about the idea of energy. So if you imagine what the art of collaboration is about, what Paul brought to that meeting and does is the energy. Let's do this. OK, let's, I, as I was calling, let's be interested. Mm -hmm. And it's not because we're undermining or, or diminishing the reality of the sadness or the loss or indeed the trauma that people have feel, we, that, that, that ultimately our lives are traumatic as well as being hopefully enriched by human experience, but they can be very traumatic. Mm -hmm. But inserting that energy is the difficult thing. How do you get that, you said momentum, they are physical ideas. How do you get the wheels rolling? Yes, exactly. And, and the, re, the way you can, the only way you can do it, the only way you can do it is with love. It's the only thing you have you have to say i mean you know at, at, at its core i love myself enough to get out of the bed mm -hmm. um, I, and i there are people i can be loved i can love other people i can share the fun of the thing what are we talking about when we laugh we're not talking about laughing at we're talking about with why was the audience brought in why do we share the buns? You didn't mention we went around with the buns. <laughs> it's not the first bun as well. <laughs> it, was, you, uh, <laughs> it ultimately, ultimately, the answer to trauma, the answer to trauma isn't to deny the trauma or get over it or move on. All these awful phrases that are actually, yeah, they're, 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 they're faux. Yeah. The, the, the answer is to find a space 
where you can find love. And and like the pop singer said, that doesn't come around every day. Um, but what it does, you've got to be interested. And then it has to be real. And then there are people who who are exploited and will exploit. And they're, 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 it has to be authentic. And it's painful when you get burned and you still have to come out again and try and look for love. I mean, it, it, it in a way that is... That is the, uh, I think, the apex of human experience. And not to be too grandiose, but if said, you said to me, I'm going to give you a new job. I'm going to pay you more money. I'm going to, I'm going to put on the telly. But you'll have no friends. <laughs> oh, God, sign me up, joke. Um, <laughs> it's like um, uh, T.S. Eliot's poem I often quote. I, I saw it, first of all, in Ivor Brown's waiting room. And right. it was to love it all is to be vulnerable. Love anything at all, and your heart will be cracked open. Now I'm not quoting it exactly, but that's that's the idea in terms of yeah. If you, if you lock it in, it's like putting it in a coffin. It will it may not be broken, but it will be in a coffin and it'll be dead. And mm. um, so and, that and, does... and, and and you mentioned Ivor. I mean, he got rest to me. Just died last week. I really yeah. one of the originators of the of the of the trauma informed therapy. Yes, um, I know. And Amazing. extraordinary character, um, you know, uh, but he wasn't wrong about that. You know, ultimately, you have to decide whether you can love or be in love or loved. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't realize that we are essentially lovable. You know, we, 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 people, we are, you know, in all our misshapenness. There's a terrible thing about modern world isn't it, where the only people who can be loved are somehow shaped and they look a certain way. Mm. That's all. And cool. it, and in, in, in to follow up on that, Jim, it's 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 to consider ourselves as part of nature, really. I mean, it's not in its essence, it's not difficult really to love nature no. itself. Yeah. And in fact, we are very much part of nature ourselves. Our own our mm. own yeah. presence yeah. is not is, is nature, and somehow we have this disembodied sense of ourselves it's part of the challenge of living uh, we're facing in this world is this sense of disconnection mm -hmm. and then it's connecting back into our own natures uh, and not having that connection is part of part of the problem of um what we have the with the global warming and so on so forth is the, is the, is the loss of interest in our in our environment in which we live in you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you speak a lot, Paul, don't you, about presence and, you know, being operating from a higher level of consciousness, if you like, and how that is what allows us to to really communicate, if you like, because we are mm. we are here. We are now we're not somewhere distracted in our mind thinking about tomorrow, last week, mm. but we're actually fully here. And I think that's that's the greatest gift that we give. That is, in in many ways, it's love because we're giving from a place where we are present. If we're absent, mm. it, I think you can feel that. You know, yeah. when someone isn't truly with you, you 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 feel that loss, if you like. Mm. 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 I mean, being present is so important. You know, part of the part of the challenge we face now is people coming present to themselves. Mm. And the capacity just to sit and be still and to not distract ourselves with a phone or with a uh, something on the television or a screen or something, but actually just to sit and be present to yourself. I often find when I do, a bit like yourself, Fiona, at the beginning, I often do, do, might open a session with a little bit of mindfulness. And I often find younger people in particular find it extremely uncomfortable oh, to just to sit easy. It's mm. extremely challenging for them. So the, their nervous systems mm. are so... Mm so revved up so this this sense of becoming coming into presence with ourselves is so critical because if we don't we're actually operating for the most part with only half of our brains i mean and jim might talk a little bit more about this but we're, we're operating with our left hemisphere primarily and we're not drawing on a much broader perspective and we can do it in very simple ways even just by rubbing the tips of our fingers together i mean even if people want to just do that now and to just get a sense of the ridges on your fingers and when you do this and when you or even just try and feel your toes in your shoes when you do these sort of things you're immediately here you're nowhere else but you're present and so that sense of tactile response even just doing that or breathing mindfully three or four breaths regularly throughout the day can make such a difference to mm. the the uh 
mental spaces and the landscapes we 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 explore we're not it's about it's about awareness yeah. isn't it paul i mean if, yeah. you're, if you if you can live not being aware you were alive that you were not not being fully aware of in fact i suppose to have a day where you're fully aware that you're alive you know swift who is the found, founder of mental health uh, in ireland said may you live every day of your life you know, it's a it's 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 a really key idea. Are, I am I living now, and how how can I move to the people say this isn't a life? Well, how do we make this a life? And it isn't by further isolating ourselves or disconnecting ourselves. It is about energy, and 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 about the imagination. Paul brings imagination to this, so he's he's coming up with let's do this. You know, let's 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 go to Paris and uh, and and say poetry in the street. You know, mm. and 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 you know. Yeah, I'm interested. Let's let's do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, but but equally, he talks about neurology and and the and you see one of the things we we're both fascinated by is about the brain and he talks about the hemispheres and the imaginative world of the right hemisphere is so under is so underplayed, it's so undervalued, and 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 what we have then is a whole series of areas now that we're or connectedness, not even just areas that we're we're, we're, we're we're becoming aware of, and I I I I I go on to Paul about the the, the recent enlightened discovery of a thing called the insula, the island, which is deep underneath the the place where the frontal lobes and the parietal and the temporal all meet under what's called the lid, actually. Mm. So what's under the lid? Under the lid of your brain is this place called the island. It's very small but it is the most richly, densely connected area in the whole of the frontal lobes. And until recently, nobody knew what it was about, what it was for, what it was doing. But we know it had to be doing something enormously important. There's one on the right, one on the left, but it has to be done something really important because it's so richly innervated and connected. And one of the things we now know it does, in fact, the principal little thing it does, it gives us a sense of other people. It gives us a sense of ourselves. So if you say at the moment, mm, I'm feeling a little bit tired, your insula has made you aware of that. If you say, I'm a little bit nauseated, well, I shouldn't have had so much for lunch. You're, you can't know that without a center saying, who am I? What am I? What am I doing? Yeah. But more importantly, you can't do it unless you have that same connectedness telling you, who are you? Who's listening here? Who are these wonderful people making the comments? Am I aware of them? And what is my awareness of them? And actually, we need to make sure that our insula is powered up, is, is connected. The more we exercise that, um, the more we become neighbors, the more we become community, the more we become, if you like, human. You know, yes. to be aware of the other, in a sense, you know, in most of the great faiths, it's the key. You know, the key is the awareness not of yourself but of the other and you can't do it unless you exercise uh, this you know the imaginative warm connected mm. sense of the frontal lobes and, and my insula is very connected it's 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 jumping around here it's very <laughs> <laughs> i have to say um there's a uh, comment there maybe to expel that word I, I, is it i n s s u l a i think insula would that be correct? yeah insula a i n s u l a look people okay. look at it there's a lot written about it recently because it's such an exciting development of neurophysiology and psychology and and it, it gives people a hope that in many ways something that we'd always seen as being the bedrock of you know yeah, so, so as, uh, faiths and religious practices or social practices actually has a material basis mm -hmm. yes yeah <laughs> which yeah. is kind of you know makes you think about it should have been <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing yeah. what we know now it's, i'm just going to read the polls here and um, sorry to interrupt you i'm just going to go through this because i'm really interested to see what people are saying so are you willing to make more of an effort to seek out positive connections both personally and professionally people say yes they are that's 100 percent say they're willing to make more of an effort and i think that's an important point to highlight isn't it that there is this sense of a conscious effort that needs to be made that we can someone was saying there about coasting along you know that we can just coast through our lives that kind of lack of awareness that lack of presence so i think it's really important and i i actually really hope that this webinar this evening will sort of catapult you into that 
conscious effort, if you like. Mm-hmm. Is there someone there that you 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 actually really enjoy their company that you think maybe maybe we could collaborate in some way? Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a there's a possibility we could get together and we could organize this or we could go there or you know something that you an idea that comes mm-hmm. to you and to act on it. Don't wait. Act on it now and then. Don't don't mm-hmm. put it off till maybe not now because there's mm-hmm. too much going on with work or you know mm-hmm. we can we hold back so much on this and I think it's mm-hmm. it's it's a real pity. I, th- I think it's about yeah. reaching out, yeah. And I think another thing that strikes me, Sean, as you're speaking yeah. there, is about accountability in a sense. And I know that sounds very kind of officious, but yeah. we are living in a time where it's become increasingly more and more acceptable for people to find ways of not showing up. You know, the way we, we went to a poetry evening there last week, mm. and I think there like were hundreds and hundreds of people that signed up for it, but only a short, only a relatively small number of people actually showed up for it. And it's the same for when we talk about hybridization and we talk about maybe having half online and half in person and things like that. People are uh, more and more having a feeling of like, Oh, I don't really have to bother. I can opt mm. out. It doesn't. Mm. It's, it's mm. not all that important. But actually, mm. you, coming back to that word presence, your presence is actually a gift. Mm. And yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. so reminding you of yourself of that. Actually, nobody will notice if I'm not there. But actually, mm. yeah. it's to 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 remember your presence is is very important. Mm. Uh, yeah. and, and I think I think a compassionate understanding as to why we do that is, you know, it's not the some super ego telling you you're lazy. Or I, in my view, my experience is not that people are bad or, or they can't schedule or they can't get their diary or, you know, we're not talking about some kind of um, Dr. Phil notion that you've got to have it all in order at all. For me, the commonest reason for most of our dilettante life, or if you like our wasted life, is anxiety. It's fear. You know, you know, oh, I might get a cold. <laughs> I might, I might, you know, I might miss the bus. I, I might never way home, or there mightn't be anybody there I like, or there mightn't be anybody there who's interested in me, or that I could be interested in. There might be any, there might be anything there that fires up my insula. Mm-hmm. And even, a kind of an, an unknown anxiety, just to, oh. not even being able to put words on it, just this kind of feeling. I, I'm just not oh. going to go because. Oh, Fiona, so right. I, I'll never forget, and we talked earlier before we went on camera about how much we learned from our, our clients and our patients, but the lady who, who said this to me years ago was it gave me a great gift. I asked her, what was the issue? And she said, oh, doctor, it's nameless dread. Yes, exactly. And I just, I just said, it's a very oh, good name. Said, oh, yeah, now I've got it now. I absolutely, And I know what nameless dread is. Yes. Dread. So you say, oh, I signed up for the poetry reading, but heck, Oh, it might be awful. I don't think I'll go. Now it's oh. yeah, there is a carelessness maybe and stuff, but I'm not judging. We're, Paul's not judging anyway. Mm. I think those people who weren't on those seats wanted to be there. Mm. Couldn't mm. get over the thing that was stopping them from being nameless there. dread. Yeah. I, I think it's it's vulnerability too, isn't it? I mean, mm. Renee Brown talks about vulnerability as a, as a superpower. And I think, you know, in order to get more uh, used to being with vulnerability, you just have, to, it's a bit like performance itself, the way of learning how to perform is actually to go out and be on stage and showing up. And so to deal with vulnerability is that piece about showing up and experiencing that uncertainty, that yeah. sort of. And it's yeah. like going for a walk. You never regret it. You don't come back and say, God, I wish I hadn't gone. There's always no. that sense of, you know, even if you if it wasn't the best time, there's still a sense of almost like um, being a friend to yourself that you you went. And there's, a, yeah. sort of a, you know, an acknowledgement of that internally, I think. Like I know so this- many of these things, the poets yeah. that say better, you know, and the, Theodore Recchi is one of my favorite poets about this stuff. And he says, you know, I learn by going where I have to go. You know, it's the actual going that you learn. If you don't go, you don't, you know, and, and and learning by going where you have to go is just a wonderful thing. Be accepting yeah. in a sense that you're being led, that you have to go, but yeah. that you're actually going to learn by doing that. And, yeah. say, and, and in another one of his works, he, he compares that to the mindful piece where another idea where he says sometimes you actually don't go but you learn by doing that, by staying still. He says, a lively, under- understandable spirit once entertained you. It will come again. Be still. Wait. And 
and there is that gap between going and coming, which is mm. waiting and resting and saying, okay, I'm not going now, but an hour's time I am going to go. <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, yes, I, yes. I, no, I noticed Dr. Fidama Healy there has, a, has yeah. asked a question. Is it okay that I read it out? Please do, uh, yeah, yeah. What, what about the problem of having too many people that you can collaborate with and getting overwhelmed as a result? Mm -hmm. How to do with overwhelm in terms of who you collaborate with um yeah i mean i definitely have challenges in that regard uh, and one thing i've begun to think about more and i've read a little bit about it and for them you might look into this is the hierarchy of goals and taking your time to to figure out well which of these different people that you might collaborate with or these different groups that you could you could uh, collaborate with going down what's important to you in your life and that. So, so th there's this piece about a hierarchy of, of goals because the, the reality is we can't do everything. And I do think it is one of the challenges we face in our world at the moment is this sense of wanting to do so much. Mm. And we, we only we only have one life, actually. And, mm. you know, genuinely less is more. Mm. You know, I have to I have to listen to my own advice as well. But um, mm. Jim, have you some you, thoughts about yeah. that? Oh, I, I, um... I certainly share the experience because you want to. So so what I value in in, in there, there's lots of things we value, but but one of the things I value most of all is this capacity, the energy to collaborate, having the energy to do it. But I can't sustain the energy. You know, uh, you know you. You, you 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 get exhausted or you get sick or you know you you have a setback or you feel wounded and these are sort of they're sort of injuries they're taxations on your your energy and in a way they have to, you have to guard against some of those you have to make some choices here and and the choice isn't do all or do nothing <laughs> <laughs> there's a middle choice the via media you, the, the option of saying well i'll do some of that you know and it 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 it, it it's really a discovery of your own autonomy your own mm. your own the justice of that i can mm. say no to some of these things yeah. i need to to mind my energy i've got to i've got a store of energy and i'm going to go to the places where that energy is restored and built up but not now because now I've made a decision. I'm going to be still and wait and rest and do something that I enjoy. In That's a sense, essential, yeah. It, in a sense, though, it's it's a it's 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 not all about choice, because we we often don't have choices. There's lots of things we don't have choice, but it is about trying to rescue your autonomy. You can make an intervention for your choice at times, even about things which have been set for you. You know, you don't choose who your you don't choose who your brother is. You don't choose who your you know, we don't actually even choose where we're born or, you know, where our neighborhood is. We, we're very, it's a, the illusion of choice is one of the pressures on us. But what we can do is rescue our autonomy within those choices and say, I'll have a piece of that, but maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. I'm just going to keep going here with the polls, lads, because with the two of you now, you're 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 so busy collaborating and connecting mm. that I'll never get through them. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Thank Just you. Please. Thank you. OK, so the first one I actually started halfway through by mistake. So do you feel that like you spend enough time with the friend or friends you love most? 21 percent said yes, they feel they do spend enough time. And 79 percent said no. Well, I'm glad there's 21 percent of you doing that, because please, that's that's wonderful. That's something I, you know, I think we all need to aspire to being able to say yes we do i think that's the life fully lived if you like and mm. um, do you seek out new collaborations and work so we've got a 50 50 here saying yes um, almost 50 50 yes and no are you open to increasing your circle uh, your social circle 93 percent of people say yes that's very uplifting isn't it to know that there's a lot of people out there who are willing to to these responses yeah. are so interesting I love the response here. Is it Sheila it says, yeah. with me, there's a constant feeling of not being prepared enough. Yes. I just need a bit more preparation on my own before I give my performance and my collaboration with others. Um, now, it might sound like a, you know, a chronic slacker, but, and, and, I, mm -hmm. and I, I don't do anything probably to the excellence of my friend, uh, the wind player. Uh, you know, I mean... But I really would like people to prepare less. 
I'd like people to show up without their homework. If they could, it'd be just great. I find this amazing. I think it's a brilliant thing you've said there, Jim. I do think we have an awful lot of um, feeling we'll never be prepared enough. Gila, this is so common. And yeah. it's not just in music, it's everywhere. It's a feeling of, oh God, we'll never, we'll yes. never, we'll the never be never ready, ready enough. The, yeah, the painting's never finished. The painting's never finished, for example. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so important. I, I love that, Jim, what you said. Stop I, stop preparing, actually. Stop preparing. I, 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 I mean, I go to meetings. We've all gone to meetings. Everybody's taking notes. Does anybody read these notes? I've got the minutes. You know, go, go, go and don't take the minutes. Rock with that. Or somebody says, are you happy with the minutes? You know, Maybe you say, I'm happy with them and I haven't read them. Now you might say, oh my God, this is appalling and we need governance and diligence and we need, we need, uh, we all need to take responsibility. And I'm, I'm, I'm crushed. We need to show up, bring our imagination, our enthusiasm, our honesty. You don't need minutes to keep you honest. You know, mm. you, you can bring your honesty without the minutes and you don't need preparation for that. You come with integrity and with a heart and ahead and then you listen and mm. then you say do you know that doesn't make any sense and i don't care what this is a minute or not <laughs> you know yeah. if we were to say the, the key thing to all of this really is about listening and i mean that listening i'm talking about really is first of all to listen to ourselves what's going on i mean often when i'm working with clients in coaching and i just say how about we just sit for three or four minutes and might ask a question, so what do you want? And just stop. What would you like from this space? And just before you answer, just listen to your body. Mm. Listen to what's going on inside of yourself. It's, I mean, it's, we really just need to stop and listen. I remember hearing once somebody saying, um, when we press pause on the computer, it stops working. And when we press pause on the human, we start working. We oh, start going, good. we start going, wow. But here's the thing about Very collaboration, true. Paul. Actually, I don't think we can press our own pause button very easily. I certainly. Mm. But one of these you've done for me, and, you know, I won't embarrass you, but numbers of times you said, hold a minute. Hmm. What are you talking about? And I'd say, oh, or another one you've offered is, what do you really want? What is it you really want? Yeah. And uh, Great you, it's well, you discovered your own uh, your own self deception, really only in collaboration because that and now you have to. That's where you you're not going look and saying I, I'm open to my exposing my vulnerability. I'm 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 leaving myself bare. Nobody's going naked into this meeting, okay? But if you are open to somebody saying, you know, have have you have you thought about what you really mean? And then you say. I'm prepared to listen to that. Mm. All of a sudden, we talked before we came on the air about pretending to be able to do sporting analogies when you can't play golf and I can't play football. And it's easily exposed. Somebody says, you don't know what you're talking about. But would you want to hear that? Would you? But in collaboration, you do hear that willingly and you say, yeah, yeah I have a clue. <laughs> And, and, and it's being comfortable thing... with that, isn't it? It's yeah, being able to... you... yeah. Well, welcoming it, the liberation of it. Oh my God, I don't have to have a clue. That's not why I'm here. Oh, here's no, here's no. another radical thing, a radical piece of advice that's remarkably difficult to follow, but it's vital in terms of collaboration and coaching. Don't give advice. <laughs> yes, yeah. Don't give advice. Just, if in doubt, just listen. Always, yeah, absolutely. You well, know? do you know what, guys? I am going to say, I can't quite believe it, but that is a full 60 minutes that we've been chatting here. So we have been flowing in presence, to be honest. We really have. And I think that we could just keep talking. I could listen to you all night, both of you. <laughs> and it's really, 
remarkable is the word, I think, to be honest with you, that you both are remarkable in your own unique ways. And I think it's when two remarkable people and the rest of your, you know, in the art of collaboration come together, then that's when the magic really happens. Because like we say, it's the interplay of all of those different um, qualities that you have. And what really shines through more than anything this evening is your absolute love for one another. Mm. You are so, so supportive and encouraging of one another. Yeah, Each, you know, it's, it's I'm amazing. Glad you, I'm glad you said this, Fiona, because I think, you know, I, again, we could talk about this for a long time, but men actually, the affection yeah, men feel yeah. for each other yeah. is, could, could, it, it could you make know, there, There's no doubt that that's an area that is, is in a sense, it's unspoken. It's done. It's it's. Uh, we don't speak of it, and we don't speak when it's there. Uh, yes. But it, it's actually vital. It's vital, you know. And yes. uh, you know, you're absolutely right. You it, it, affection, uh, kindness, um, an admiration, um, a sense a, a sense of uh, being thrilled and having been shared with and being sharing these things. These are hugely powerful motivators for a collaboration, but also for well being overall. Yeah, yeah. They're, aren't, aren't they aren't they the salt and sugar of our they lives? They are, they yeah, really they are. Do. So, guys, I'm gonna thank you so much. Okay. Thank we you. need to do thank this again in some other Absolutely. way. We need to keep collaborating because it's just been marvelous. And I'm gonna just finish up with a couple of things. I want to um give your website, Paul, uh, for anyone yeah. who's looking for coaching, if you're you know, any kind of your website, and also um you're a leadership coach. I think you'd be amazing to work with, and mm -hmm. also um the art collaboration website. So Kieran will put those in. And then, Jim, your your books are closed, so we won't be sending anyone to, to your way. But um, your book is open, your actual book people can buy. I've read it myself. I absolutely I'm sure people here have read it as well. So that book is available in, in, in all books. All your books are available, I'm sure, at, in, in bookstores. Um, around. Thank you very much. Fiona. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much. And just to say Great our pleasure. next um, Building Emotional Resilience is the 12th of March. And it's going to be all about sleep. And both of you, listen to me, Jim and Paul now, right? On the 11th of April, I'm having my book launch in Hodges and Figgis, right? And your presence is required. <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be, be, there. We'll be there sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if I yeah. don't see you there, I'll just I, say, oh, they couldn't be bothered. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. We, we just couldn't get the energy and the momentum. So no, we were back, we were back that, that dread, that <laughs> nameless dread that came the Nameless over dread. That's, that's what we couldn't get. <laughs> I hope <laughs> not. I hope not. Well, listen, thank you listen, so Greg, much, everyone. And you, uh, thanks for everybody being for being on the call. And best, yeah, best, yeah. best of luck to everybody. Lovely responses. Tremendous connection. Great, there. Great, Thank you so much. Great, beautiful group. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of love, everyone. Enjoy your Thank evening. You. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye Paul. Bye, Jim. Bye. bye.